Why do spammers come in different sizes? But most important, why are spammers useful? Good morning, students. I'm Mr. Boscarini, and for our unit on forces and their effects, today we're going to understand turning forces. So, we're going to describe the forces acting on a seesaw, but most importantly, we're going to understand uh, what happens when forces turn about what we will call a fulcrum or pivot. And eventually, in the following lesson, we're going to see how to balance different weights on a seesaw. So far, we have explored what forces are. Uh, we have seen the different effects of forces from a point of view of putting an object into motion, uh, changing the motion of an object, including its direction, or changing the shape of an object. But now we're going to see something different. So let's imagine that we want to open a door. And let's take a few seconds just to look at this cartoon, okay? So we have this kid who's, well, obviously pushing a door, but look also at the rest of the cartoon. Okay, so now, you know that when you try to open a door, either by pushing or pulling, um, it's not important only the force you're applying on the door, for instance, on the handle. It's also important where, okay? And you know that the more far away you are from the hinges, so what we call the turning point of our door, the easier it will be for you to open that door. So, in order to explain this, we need to introduce a new physical quantity, and we will call this a turning force, or the moment of a force, and sometimes also known as the torque. I will write it for you now. Um, and this is what uh, we say, it, the moment of a force, the turning effect of a force, is the effect of a force around the turning point. So this is really important. Now, we're not talking about a force acting on an object which can move around freely. We have an object which is sort of bound to turn around a fixed point. We're going to call that fixed point pivot or fulcrum. You can use either of these words, okay? Most of the time we use pivot, but it's really important that you also know what is the meaning of a word fulcrum. So let's go back to the example of a door. So we have uh, a door here. Now you see the handle. And let's imagine we're pushing this door here. Now you know that um, the effect of this force will change um, depending on where you're applying this force. If it's here next to the handle or closer to the hinges, or as we call in this case, the pivot. And you know that the closer you are to hinges, the more difficult it is for you to open the door. You need more force to get the same effect. So, what is important? It's important that we take into account not only the force we're using, but also the distance from the pivot at which we're applying the force. So, we're having a combined effect. So, we have a new physical quantity that takes as an input to our physical quantities. One of them is force, which by now we know very well, and the other one is the distance from the pivot, the distance from the turning point. But as you know, every physical quantity needs some numbers. Now, we cannot just say, oh, this is so and so. We need to define some values. So how do we find the value of a moment of force? We need a formula, and that formula is what you see over here. The moment of a force is defined by the product. You see multiplication here between the force you're applying and the distance from the pivot. Actually, this is not the complete story. There's a little bit more we need to say here, but we'll see it a little bit later. Now, so just to um, imagine now how we can find that, let's make an example. Let's imagine your your this is your hand, you see here, you're holding a very long ruler, like um, a meter stick, no? And you're going to um, take a mass, for instance, a mass of a kilogram, and we're going to hang it from this ruler. So just to have a numerical reference, we'll put place this 
ruler here so now we know exactly some values and we're looking at this scale below which is in centimeters okay and we'll start by placing this kilogram here over here very close to my head okay so one centimeter away so let's try to use this formula to find the moment that this force because remember it's a mass so it has a weight it's pulled down by gravity so um, it's applying a moment around what is the pivot in this case the pivot is obviously my hand so let's let's just write this thing here so this is the pivot or turning point okay and this will be will stay fixed what i'm measuring here with this ruler is the distance from the pivot and this is my weight now one kilogram of mass this is something we need to remember one kilogram of mass corresponds if you remember to more or less 10 newtons of weight so let's let's write down how much is the moment in this case so moment moment when this is here is equal to the force there you go the force is 10 newtons times the distance and according to this rule over here the distance is one centimeter so 10 times 1 makes 10 and now this is interesting what is the unit now uh, the moment doesn't have its own unit it doesn't have a unit with a special name we're just going to combine the units of weight with the units of distance and in this case since we're me measuring uh, forces in newtons and uh, distances in centimeters we're going to call this newton per centimeters will be we'll also have a case later on where the distance will be measured in meters in that case the moment will be given in newtons per meters you'll have to see case by case depending on which units are using for force but especially for the distance okay that was easy but let's think now what happens if i keep my hand where it is okay keep the ruler as it is but i slide down this weight okay a little bit further down for instance right here at five centimeters now if you try that you can already imagine that um it will be more difficult to hold the stick and which might seem incredible because at the end the force is not changing it's the same force it's still 10 newtons so why this should feel heavy of course the answer is because the moment has increased and why it has increased not because the force has become bigger but because the distance has become longer so let's calculate the new moment in this remember the pivot is always here the force is always 10 newtons so the new moment with a new position will be not surprisingly let's rewrite this moment equals to 10 newtons okay this hasn't changed what has changed has changed the distance now it's five centimeters so times times five makes 50 so the new moment is 50 newtons per centimeters and as you can see the moment has increased by a factor of five not surprisingly it feels more uncomfortable harder to to hold the stick because uh the previous moment has increased by a factor of five despite the fact that the force has remained exactly the same so what happens at this point if we slide the weight even further down let's say another five centimeters so let's slide it all the way to 10 centimeters and you can already try to do the math in your own head i mean you you have understood how this works right now right and very quickly we can find out that in this third and last case we're going to see with this example at the moment is equal again to 10 newtons that hasn't changed but now the distance is not one is not five but is 10 centimeters okay and the result is 10 times 10 which is 100 okay newtons per centimeters 
Now, with respect to the previous case, we have doubled the distance, and the result has been to double the turning effect, to double the moment of our force. And now, back to what I, sh I show you at the beginning of this video, the spanner, or as um, they call it in the US, the wrench. Let's write it down here just for remembering, you know, wrench. In Italian, we call it chiave inglese, for reasons which totally uh, I don't know um, so you know that we use a spanner usually together with these two objects and if you don't know it they're called this part here it's called a bolt and this hexagonal part here it's called a nut okay so you use a spanner or wrench in order to tighten or loosen a knot around a bolt and in mechanics you find this everywhere if you if you take a look for instance at your bicycle you'll find these pieces around so uh, of course a spanner is useful first of all because the head of a spanner fits nicely with the shape of a knot but more importantly is the handle because you have to think okay this thing here in order to tighten or to loosen it, you don't apply a force. You, you need to apply a turning effect. You need to apply a moment. So this is our pivot, okay? Our turning point. And in order to have a bigger effect, what I need, I need to get away from this pivot. I need to put myself at a distance, okay? So if, my put, if I put my hand here, for instance, I apply a force in this direction, okay, I will get a moment which is given by the product between this force and this distance. And the longer the distance is, the bigger the moment I'm able to apply with the same force. So it's obvious that in order to apply a bigger moment, we need longer and longer spanners. At this point, you might ask yourself, so why don't we just make super long spanners to start with? Uh, there's a catch here, because if you have very small bolts and nuts, if you apply a moment which is too strong, you might break the nut, you might break the bolt. So there's actually a relationship between how big is this opening here, and how long uh, your spanner has to be. So if you have um, uh, a set of spanners, you will see that those with a smaller opening are shorter, and as they increase uh, in size, uh, that means you need a bigger moment to get the same effect, then you need a longer spanner. To finish our introduction today on turning effects, let's look at the seesaw actually this is not your typical seesaw is not your typical playground seesaw this is a still from a very funny video that i will share with you but as you can imagine this big log you see here this beam okay is balanced here okay actually let's use the symbol that we're going to use uh, from now on to symbolize a pivot or fulcrum Okay, now the important thing of a seesaw, it's one of those typical examples where you don't have one turning effect. You don't only have one force, but you have multiple forces. For instance, in this case, all the weights from all these guys try to balance on one side and also on the other side, our seesaw. So, um, our, uh, what will be the topic for our next lesson will be how to see how we can balance different moments, how we can uh, take into account different moments acting on the same objects. But for today, that's all. Goodbye from Mr. Boscarini.